Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. It is time for the world-famous Dynamite Report. And this is one of these shows that shouldn't take long to review because it's really just wrestling. Not like a lot of angles or anything like that. But it did open up with Samoa Joe coming up, coming out. And he talked about MGF getting beaten up last week. And are you ready for my uh, my most intense criticism of this show? Mm. One of the yeah. reasons that people like AEW, especially the beginning, was because they did not do the things that irritated people about WWE. Okay? Uh, and I think some people are just, they can't help themselves now. But when Samoa Joe came out and he was upset that MGF got beaten up, because this might jeopardize his, quote, championship opportunity. It's like, God, help me. Just say title shot. I'm begging you. So anyway, with that out of the way, he said a bottle got busted over MGF's head. It was a band of beer that a certain cowboy liked to drink. And when he went looking, a certain hangman was missing. So hangman comes out. He says, listen, if you want to say something to me, just say it to my face. And if you think it's me, if you think I care about the devil, you're wrong. I don't care about this bromance, laser tag, who done it, anything. You want to do something about it? Let's go. So then Roderick Strong comes out, and he says, Joe, you should listen to this young boy, Hangman Page, my young boy. He says, look at what's happening here. Jay White wanted a world title match. He got attacked. Acclaimed lost a match for Max. They got attacked. Then the goons attacked Max, but you know what? They didn't touch him. They didn't lay one hand on him. And we also never saw him physically touched when he got laid out last week. So he says, obviously, it's obvious, the devil is MJF. And it's sort of yelling at Hangman. So Hangman punched him, and we got the opener, which was Roderick Strong and Hangman Page. Very, very good match. Hangman, like, man, he's, this guy's, I don't know if it was, uh, you know, he lost that Texas death match or the, yeah, Texas death match. But, man, this guy's over. He stomped this dude in the corner. He made his big comeback there going crazy. Went for the moonsault, missed, but he hit a sit-out powerbomb. Kingdom takes the ref. Hangman takes them both out with the moonsault to the outside. Goes for the buckshot. It gets countered. They go back and forth. Hangman hits him with a dead eye. Pins him. Excellent opener. Then we had the first of multiple tournament matches. Brody King versus Andrade. Excellent match. Highlighted by the beginning as they grappled on the mat. And Andrade, Andrade hitting Brody King with a side headlock takeover. I was howling. And uh, I'm not even sure that Brody wanted to go over. Because, man, Andrade yanked his neck to get that side headlock takeover. But, man, he got him. He's making sure he was going over. Eat a low chance. And, you know, it is pretty impressive, this Andrade. Given how absolutely gigantic he is now. So finally, they're brawling, and they're fighting up on top, and Andrade grabs him, and he gives him a DDT onto the top of the corner post, the exposed corner post, and uh, and then he gets a hammerlock DDT, and he pins him. Excellent. Probably my second favorite match on the show, although I got to think about it. Then we had Renee with Kevin Ross and Marshall Von Eric. Kevin says, man, I love this AEW. And he's interrupted by Danhausen, Orange Cassidy, and Trent. And Orange says, you know, guys, I got a match on Rampage. I need two partners. And Danhausen says, you're betraying us right in front of us. And Orange said, yeah, we're in Texas. And so Trent and Danhausen say, I guess you're right. So Marshall and Ross agreed they will be teaming with Orange Cassidy on the Rampage show that is coming up this Friday. That has been taped, but I will not give you spoilers for. I will not give you spoilers. And I know when I say this, people are thinking that I'm giving a spoiler. But I actually don't know who won. But I'm still going to say it like this. I won't give you spoilers as to who wins the match with the Von Erics in Texas on Friday on Rampage. Iron Claw coming to theaters near you. Why is it, though, when people complain about the WWE-style openings, and I can understand that, that they don't look at a segment like that that was so goofy and dumb and just say the same thing, that, well, we don't like copying what WWE does with stupid comedy for interviews? 
I don't know. Don't look at me. Yeah. Just asking. This was better than every single women's backstage segment on NXT this week by miles. <laughs> it's well. I will say that. Then we had Kenny and Jericho come out. Boy, this segment. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, speaking. All right. Now, now we got one. I think we can all universally agree, whether you're a WWE supporter, whether you like the long segments, whether you don't like the the long segments, no matter what it is, you couldn't have liked this because it went on forever. And this just... did go on way too long. Oh. But first, and actually the most amazing, it was the most amazing thing, but I was, I was pretty amazed. So... They actually did Chris Jericho's entrance during the commercial. So you couldn't even hear the fans singing his song. So they come back to commercial, these guys are just in the ring. And so Jericho says, you know, we got attacked a while ago by Big Bill and Ricky and uh, dislocated my elbow and put him out for three weeks and kicked Kenny in the face, put him out. So get get your uh, sorry uh, behinds out here. Took us his. So Bill and Ricky come out. Ricky says, I got no problems with you, Kenny. You're responsible for this place. But Jericho, I got nothing to thank you for. So that makes me question you, Kenny. Why do you trust a guy like Chris Jericho? He screwed everybody. And Bill then says, look at everything he's done to you. If he turned on you today, he says, nobody would be surprised. And Kenny says, we all know I don't trust this guy. So he says, let's talk about your past, Big Bill. You guys remember the firm... I don't either. I would say that firm angle with MJF was more like the flaccid. Whoa. Or right up something right up your alley, soft. That did get a pop. That was good. By the way, everything that got a pop in this had to do with WWE, I can't help but notice. Well. He says, listen, when it comes to beatdowns, I'm the king of receiving them. So if you want to talk a big game, that's cool. On December 30th, Kenny Omega says, at World's End, perhaps the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> Oops. Actually, the Golden Jets. We're not the Winnipeg Jets. The Golden Jets, they're going to take your titles. Ricky says, you're on. But before we uh, get there, let me remind you of something. Back in January, he says, I beat you, Chris Jericho, on Dynamite. And Big Bill, Big Bill interrupts and he goes, actually, you beat him twice. You beat him on pay-per-view as well. And Ricky seemed like he had no idea that he beat Chris Jericho on pay-per-view. He goes, I beat you on pay-per-view, too. He says, so I I've already done me. half the work. We're the best tag team of all time. We don't even have a name. And so Jericho says, well, I got some names for you. Oh, boy. And he got he has one name that gets bleeped. Fandango style here. He tried and, this, and it didn't work. And the crowd's kind of dead. And he goes, all right, I, I can do better. He goes, how about the Rick and the uh, the Richard? He actually said Dick. That's another name for Richard. I don't know if you're aware of it or not. It's true. But anyway, like that, like nobody popped except one guy, Big Bill. He laughed at that one. <laughs> he tried so hard not to laugh, but you, he got cracked. And so then Jericho says, well, how about, you know, we, we put your, your uh, names together, first names, and we'll have, you guys can be Big Billy Starks. Because, as Dave noted, there's a wrestler, Billy Starks. <laughs> okay. I wanted to clarify that. So, uh... Starks goes, eh, you know, that one fell kind of flat. And so then Jericho says, well, you know, maybe it did fall flat. But let me tell you one thing. All you are, Ricky, is a better dressed, less charismatic version of Enzo Amore. That popped the crowd. They were like, oh, man, that was a sick burn. And so then Stark said, well, you can make as many jokes as you want. I'm sick and tired of both of you. You want war? Bring it. World's end. The title match is on. So there you go. An My Enzo reference. Absolutely big. An Enzo reference. Well, you can't beat that. Yeah, Vinny already had a name for him. I don't know why Tony doesn't like that one. Absolutely big. We had Rio and Ruby Soho. <laughs> Wait till wait till they're uh, they turn babyface and they're in a uh, intergender six person tag with Billy Starks. What do you do then? We had uh, Ruby Soho and uh, Riho, and crowd super loves Riho's always. She uh, hit a meteora, got the pin. Is good. 
Tony on commentary says she'll never be able to do that to me. Then we had a Wardlow video package. Roosh and Jay Lethal. This one was quick. And uh, the highlight, which to me was actually the low light, was uh, Roosh tapped him out with, I swear, the worst sleeper I've ever seen. Oh. And it's funny because we were talking about, uh, you know, we were talking on uh, the Tuesday show about, you know, those old angles in the territory days. We're like, you know, this guy went to seven countries and learned from the greatest sleeper hold practitioners in the world. Six months of hard training to learn how to do the sleeper hold. I was like, I could teach sleeper hold in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I could teach you how to do a choke sleeper and choke somebody out. But uh, apparently I was wrong. Roosh needs to travel to multiple countries yeah. and uh, talk to the spoiler or whoever because this was the worst sleeper I've ever seen in my whole life. He had his arm outside his own arm. Not even like, like everyone, what? I was so mad. I was yelling at the screen. He's got an elastic belt in BJJ, Brian. He's he's just starting out. Mark Briscoe and Jay White, another excellent television match. Golly, this freaking Mark Briscoe. Like, we all know Jay White's great. But, like, you guys realize that Mark Briscoe has had ne never had anything less than a great match in AEW. Yeah. Name the last average match the guy had. You'll never find a bad one. Nope. He, has, he has had nothing less than excellent matches every as a single. So, anyway, this was awesome. That's why Blade Runner finish. Him in this tournament. Golly, he was great. Blowing it. They better have a story for him coming out of this thing. I know they have one with Lethal, and maybe their stories intertwine together since they have one match together. But man, for the reaction that he gets for what for what he is and what he does and his age at this point, come on, damn it, do something with Mark. And then we had Swerve and John Moxie in the main event, and uh, to my, I mean, I I still can't believe I'm reporting this. There was no blood. <laughs> what? And no curses got Swerve them. Swerve and John Moxley had their first... This was their first ever match, I believe. I don't think they've ever been in the ring together. Not in Defy? And neither of them bled. Hmm. It was a miracle. And they had an awesome match. And they're going back and forth, big moves, places going crazy. And finally, Swerve goes for the JML driver. Moxley rolls through. And pulls the tights not only pulls the tights he pulls so hard that swerve's shoulder comes up the ref doesn't see it. he counts the pin anyway so they beat swerve but man they uh they did everything they could to protect this guy and so now i tried to tell you guys 12 points for john moxley my uh my prediction remains he goes undefeated and it is him and eddie kingston at world's end and eddie beats him to become the first triple crown champion that is my prediction and then the show ended with the devil's crew beating up the hangman they're and up they to five choke slammed him onto the hood actually onto the glass mm. the real glass of a car five guys Cry me a river. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Orange sold the knee, which is... He got attacked. I don't remember him getting attacked Matt Menard on said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's before probably going. ROH. Are you smoking or what's happening what? here? I don't, what the fuck what is, is happening? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? Dude. I think there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need <laughs> right. to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I everyone's saying this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh my god. Maybe I open don't know them. What is there we go. The sun moved. Well, uh, yeah, the sun actually. The no. Earth, oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move, <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.